Registered Phenomena Code 197 Object Class Beta Orange Gamma Red Hazard Types Aggression Sapient Extradimensional Teleportation Regenerative Containment Protocols RPC-197 is contained in a standard controlled illumination chamber at site. In addition, RPC-197 is to be monitored with an embedded tracking chip. The containment chamber is to be constantly illuminated with approximately 100,000 lux to prevent any form of umbra from forming within the chamber. The fully shaded inner region of a shadow cast by an opaque object. Personnel assigned to RPC-197's containment are to be provided with a ring inscribed with the Bulknut symbol. A symbol that consists of three interlocked triangles. Personnel with Level 2 access are authorized to interact with RPC-197 during visitation hours between 1300 to 1000. Any interaction with RPC-197 is to be prohibited. See Addendum 197.04 Description RPC-197 is a sapient canisteris, measuring 3.7 meters in height, and identifies itself as Fenrir, the son of Loki, according to Norse mythology. Prior to Incident 231-C, RPC-197 displayed a passive behavior towards on-site personnel and socially interacted with personnel during visitation hours. However, for some unknown reason, this behavior drastically changed. This change in behavior was caused by the disclosure of RPC existence. While RPC-197 currently behaves in a hostile manner to authority personnel, RPC-197 does not acknowledge the presence of individuals who wear a ring with Norse writing and a bulk nut symbol. These rings were specially forged by the Office of Analysis and Science in the aftermath of Incident 231-C. The bulk nut symbol appears to be engraved on the top of the ring with writings in Norse on the side. These writings, when translated, outline rituals of protection against evil. It's been theorized that the bulk nut symbol was originally created by RPC as a protection against Loki and his sons, including RPC-197. RPC-197 is capable of imitating human speech, but RPC-197's voice is often perceived as distorted due to its wavering bitonality. When injured, RPC-197 will seek out to the nearest organism and consume it. This consumption of organic matter allows RPC-197 to rapidly regenerate skin damaged bones, and even vital organs. RPC-197 has been observed to displace itself from one location to another by using the umbras around it, which seem to allow RPC-197 to move around umbras without being detected as a method of concealment. Furthermore, RPC-197's displacement is limited, as RPC-197 can only displace itself to the nearest umbra. Security personnel assigned to RPC-197 are to be noted that it has been observed moving at speeds of up to 69 km per hour without the assistance of Umbras. Addendum 197.01 Discovery According to Russian military intelligence, RPC-197 was initially contained by Soviet forces north of Venetia, Ukraine in 1944. Since its containment, RPC-197 was kept at a Russian facility overseen by the Soviet Iron Initiative for 45 years until an incident occurred in 1989, where RPC-197 breached containment and caused the destruction of said facility. Following RPC-197's containment breach, the Russian government mobilized special purpose units of the Ministry of Internal Affairs to assist in the containment. Seven days later, RPC-197 was recontained by Russian forces. Due to, security, due to security concerns presented by the Security Council of the Soviet Union, in 1991, 
RPC-197 was transferred to the custody of the Authority. See Addendum 197.02 Attachment 197.01.1 The following audio transcript has been translated from Russian to English verbatim. Property of the Ministry of Defense of the Soviet Union Begin Log Lt. Col. Vasily Capt. Kuznetsov Get me a stash report. <laughs> we're in pursuit of the subject. My team is engaged and we're getting fucked out here. Captain. Command wants the thing alive. Do not try to kill it. Injure it if necessary. Gunfire and screams in the background. With all due respect, sir, my men are getting slaughtered out here. If I'm going to contain this fucking thing, at least give me some goddamn support. Captain. Expect ground and air support to your location within four minutes. Await for further instructions when the helicopter arrives, over. Yes, sir. Gunfire continues to loom the background. Several Russian officers report in casualties while attempting to contain RPC-197. MI-26 pilot, radios Kuznetsov. Comrade, I am shortly arriving to your position. I heard this thing is huge, but I don't see it, over. Target is hiding around the trees. MI-26 hovers above Kuznetsov's team. Can you do a sweep around the area? I'll try. Fucking snow and smoke are covering my view. What the hell is that thing? MI-26 helicopter is struck by a large tree, hitting the tail and spinning out of control. Shit! Mayday! Mayday! Something from the ground just hit me, and we are going… MI-26 helicopter crashes on the trees, causing it to smoke and explode. After action conclusion, following the crash of the helicopter, Captain Kuznetsov and his team located the target with the assistance of Russian special forces. Target was subdued, though heavy casualties were to be expected. Lt. Col. Vasiliev End Log Addendum 197.02 Post-Transfer Interview the following interview is an audio transcript in the aftermath of the containment transfer of RPC-197 from the Russian government. The interview was conducted by Dr. Murray. Date Interviewer Dr. Anthony Murray, Psychologist Officer Interviewee RPC-197 Begin Log I'm here. For your safety. You're glad we've managed to convince the Russians to hand you over to… us. <clears throat> you mind if I ask you a few questions? <sighs> it makes you go away. Now, judging by some of the scars on your body, what did the Russians do to you during your captivity? You simply would not understand. Try me. <sighs> they… they kept me to home for many years. They tried to cut me, dissect me and study me. But when they realized I couldn't die, they interrogated me. What did they interrogate you for? Information. Where I came from and my relations with the Germans. The Germans? Yes. Before they captured me, I was originally imprisoned by the Germans. Conducted the same actions as the Russians and tortured me. They tried to make me obey them and follow the orders from the cause. According to military intelligence report, you were originally discovered by a military division of guard. What did they do to you after your capture? German Anomalous Research Division The Germans. They wanted to know the location of the supernatural objects on me to make me talk. They were desperate as years came by, but when they evacuated the place, they left me to die for the long of eternity. That is, until they found me. The Russians, of course. Huh. By any chance, did you tell them the location? <laughs> oh, I did right. I told the officer to come closer, and I consumed him. <laughs> uh, I see. <laughs> uh, was there a particular reason for you to be left behind? I heard some bits and pieces, but I heard they were lacking the resources but not power to the near the hole. Especially when you were evacuating me at the time and had no choice. When will I be released? Hmm? 
Oh, well, I can't give you a definitive answer. <laughs> uh, but we will evaluate your behaviour for the next few months during your time here. If we believe your behaviour is deemed adequate, we may work something out. <laughs> well then, I know to have some company for my own son. If that will be fine. I'll see to it. Welcome to containment, 197. Addendum 197.03 Observation Logs In the aftermath of the interview, RPC-197 requested visitors to its containment chamber for social conversations. Due to concerns raised by site management, visitation to RPC-197 was temporarily restricted to CSD personnel as a precaution for two days until it was decided that on-site personnel were authorized for visitations. The following transcripts are a list of conversations made by on-site personnel, both CSD and Authority personnel, during visitation hours. Attachment 197.03.1 Oh god damn it. I told Jerome to turn on the recorder for these sessions. Fuck's sakes. Do I have to do everything by myself? Dr. Anthony Murray Interviewer CSD-01824 Interviewee RPC-197 Begin Log CSD-01824 takes a seat. Hey. RPC-197 tilts its head. Who are you? My name's Shane. I was requested by some researcher to be here, and with you, so… <laughs> so they did accept my request. I'm sorry? <sighs> Nothing. I am somewhat pleased to see someone like you. Are you like… some sort of talking wolf? My name is Fenrir. I am simply a creature confined by this place. Oh, alright. You doing okay in there? I am fine. Do you need anything? Well, I mean, I don't really think I need anything right now. Then I must ask you to leave. You're wasting my time. Well then, I better get… RPC-197 snarls at CSD-01824. Fuck, alright, I'll go. End log. Additional notes. Looks like we're gonna have to update our visitation policy in regards to 197. It doesn't seem to be interested in engaging with the visitor unless it piques his interest. Perhaps a question list should be provided to personnel. Dr. Anthony Murray Attachment 197.03.2 Interviewer Research Gareth Weaver, Psychologist Officer Interviewee RPC-197 I'm sorry, but uh, do you have time? As long as you amuse me. I'm like your predecessor. My predecessor? Ah! You mean the man with the orange jumpsuit. <sighs> I see. I would uh, formally like to apologize for his inconvenient behavior. That matters not. What do you want from me, Doctor? I have uh, some questions. <sighs> Go on. Right, so. What exactly were you doing before your capture by the Germans in the 1940s? I was exploring and watching the war that your species brought about to treat me. They have been slaughtered by armies, yet I always wonder to myself, why be so belligerent? It's just how humans are, unfortunately. <clears throat> now, when you say you were exploring, where in Europe were you exploring? Near the mountains, but I was in Geranger Ford, Norway. It was a quiet and beautiful place. Some of the locals knew about me and gave me some rations. That was until someone from a local village informed of my existence, and the Germans sent their best men to capture me. Did you resist capture, or did you surrender? <laughs> <laughs> the Germans didn't put much of a tent on me with their weaponry. Still, it was nothing compared to Odin when he tried to kill me during the Battle of Ragnarok. Now, actually, that was just my next question. Uh, why did you and Odin try to kill each other? And apologies for interrupting. It's fine. Odin and the Azir viewed me as a threat due to my continuous growth. They sent many armies to deal with me. They have tried to bind me twice, but both have failed. 
and the foolish Odin tried to take matters to his own hands. But, alas, he crushed his bones of dust and swallowed him and broiled him. He was tasty until Yor, the son, managed to banish me. How did you survive? What do you mean? According to the mythology, uh, Vadar killed you. Was this, was this pretense, or...? That's the funny thing about mythologies. They often have times mistaken what actually took place. When Vidar was about to tear my jaws apart, I pleaded for bargain to spare my existence and instead sent me down to hell, where I would forever lay dormant. In Norse mythology, hell, the location, shares a name with hell, a being who ruled over the location. In late Icelandic sources, varying descriptions of hell are given and various figures are described as being buried with items that will facilitate the journey to hell after their death. Yet, yeah, here you are. How are you here, when you're supposed to be in the underworld? <laughs> Let's just say I found a way out. Right, it's almost over. But I'm gonna ask one last question, if that's okay with you. Please. How certain are you that Odin is dead? Did you not hear what I said earlier? I consumed him. Well, yes, but he's quite alive. What? Yes, Odin is alive. Dr. Weaver, I think you should stop now. Head over to Dr. Murray's office, now. Additional note. We may have to consider increasing security and keeping an eye on him since he just found out an RPC is alive and within our hands. I am concerned for the state of mind that 197 may be going through. He may attempt to breach containment for all I know. Assistant Site Security Director, Colonel Keener Addendum 197.04 Incident 231-C On At 13.24 PM, Dr. Weaver was assigned to conduct a secondary interview session with RPC-197. Several minutes after the session began, RPC-197 appeared irritated and constantly asked if RPC was alive. When Dr. Weaver persisted to ask his questions, RPC-197 became agitated and breached the observation room and killed Dr. Weaver in the process. Further escalation occurred when RPC-197 breached from his containment and caused a site-wide breach. Incident resulted in Casualties Attachment 197.04.1 By order of the Global Directorate, the following transcript has been subjected to Level 4 clearance. Authorization must be approved by a staff with Level 4 clearance and above. Unauthorized access will result in procedural detainment and potentially suspended. Personnel GD Subject RPC-197 well, well, we finally meet again, Fenrir. I'm assuming you've forgotten. I know exactly who you are. Ah, and here I thought you'd forgotten about me. How was the German captivity for you? Inseverable. Like you. <laughs> sure, sure. So you had fun? Oh yes. I had fun. Fun eating the Germans. <laughs> Tell me, did you honestly believe that we all died? Well, your so-called terms were to save your men and have me die. I had no choice. I had a duty to protect my own men. <clears throat> and not to me, who has been suffering for centuries. There was a war, Fenrir. Like you said, we were killing each other. Besides, you had your own wars to fight. My wars were already past. Odin was slain by me, and I had to dig myself out of hell. I wouldn't be so sure about that. <sighs> so, it is true. He is alive. He's alive, all right. You just didn't seem to slain him properly. <sighs> I'm going to find him. And then, I'm going to find you. 
We'll cross that bridge once you've dealt with Odin. That's if you ever find him. Then I will destroy this organization, and all the sense of your humanity. The Authority will be destroyed, and watch it burn for eternity. End log.